Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Raise and support your vehicle, or you could do this on the ground. This vehicle is a bit higher. You need to remove this lower panel. If yours is completely intact, you'll have uh, eight 10 millimeter bolts around the outer edge. Up here, this one's, this bumper is broken, so these are loose. That one's broken off there. There is a push clip on either side. This one is missing, but it would look just like this one here. I'm gonna start by removing the bolts. Spray a little rust penetrant in here. Use a 10 millimeter socket extension and ratchet and just go along and remove all these bolts. This one was still connected. You done bolted here. It's broken apart. I'm not gonna worry about it. The bumper is broken, but the bolt is there. So I'll remove that bolt. This bolt here, same thing, bumper's broken, but the bolt is still there holding on this front shield. Just the clip is holding the shield on now. I'll pop the clip out with a flat bladed screwdriver to unlock it. Sometimes it, these break. This one looks kind of brittle. It's discolored, it might break. If it breaks, just replace it with a new one. Place our drain pan underneath the vehicle, catch the coolant. Then it can either be reused if it's nice and clean or disposed of properly. Now I can remove the radiator drain. It's this white plug right here. Open it up. You don't have to take it all the way out. You can just kind of un unscrew it and it'll start to drain. It's got a little nozzle on the bottom. And then what you can do, once it starts to drain, of course you're doing this when the vehicle is nice and cool. You can open up the radiator cap. It'll come out faster. After you drain the radiator, you can close this back up. We're gonna go ahead and remove the clamps off the transmission cooler lines. Squeeze those together, put them over there. Work this hose off. Need be, you can take a right angle pick and work it around the edge of the hose. It helps break the seal. Probably some fluid that's going to come out of here. You ready to catch it? There's a little bit there. I'll hold that hose up top. You can cut the fingers off. Latex glove. You can put it right over it. And then take a cable tie and get this one started. It'll keep a, a bunch of that from dripping out. Of course, the hose end, you can do the same thing. Do the same thing for both the feed and the return line. I'm gonna loosen the clamp in the lower radiator hose. You squeeze it together with some adjustable pliers. There is a part that will lock and keep it open. To get it just right and you can lock it. Slide the clamp back over the hose. It'll just sit there. You'll remove the hose from the lower part of the radiator. It should come free. If not, you'll need to use a right angle pick to break the seal, but this one's gonna come loose for us. Some coolant's probably gonna come out of here. Have a bucket ready to catch it, and just be careful it doesn't splash you in the face. Pull the overflow hose off, just careful because this part of the radiator is plastic. You don't want to break it off if you want to reuse the radiator. I'll put it aside. I'll remove the upper clamp with some adjustable pliers. There is a lock on here. You can get it in place. If it doesn't lock, you can 
still work it off and put it down the hose. Remove this hose, just kind of wiggle it back and forth, break the seal. Shouldn't be any too much coolant up here. Just put it back out of the way. Unplug the electrical connectors for the fan. There's one of these on each side. Push in the lock, pull it off. And same over here. Use a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet extension to remove these bolts. We're holding in the radiator bracket. The same for both sides. The fans are gonna stay with the radiator. You could try to remove them, uh, but there's not, believe it or not, there's not enough clearance to get them out. You can lift up on the radiator. It'll come out of the rubber mounts. Pull it straight up and out of the car. Here's our original radiator with cooling fan assembly. Here's a brand new cooling fan assembly from 1A Auto. So you can replace just the cooling fan assembly and reuse the radiator if you wish. This radiator is fine, so we're gonna reuse it. We'll swap it over. As you can see, same style design as the originals, same style connectors. These will fit great and work great for you. There's three 10 millimeter bolts along the bottom. There's three along the top. Just remove all three and then swap them over to the other radiator fan assembly. Take the old one off. Install your new fans. And line up on the same holes. I'll get the top bolt started. Put this top one on. This has the bracket on it for the hood latch. Just be aware when you take out your old radiator, these rubber grommets that fit down in the body, sometimes it never seems to fail, but one will always come out with the radiator and one will stay in the body. So when you go to reinstall the radiator, you wanna make sure that you're not missing these. They're either in the frame rail or they're in the radiator so that when they sit down in the front, the, the bottom of the radiator will be secure. I'm gonna take this one off of this radiator and sit it inside the car. And I recommend doing that if you're replacing the radiator, put these down inside the car first and then place your new radiator down on these pins or reuse your old radiator that way. So these rubber grommets, that one stayed in the frame in the front, also called the radiator support. So I'm gonna put this one back in over here. Now when I put the radiator back in, those pins in the bottom will slide in there and the radiator will be held in in the bottom. Reinstall the radiator. Lower it straight down. And get it centered on those pins. So that should slide right in. So it's held in there with the pins. Put the upper brackets in. Let's go just like that. Same for both. Reinstall the bolts. If those get tight, just stop. Same for the other side. Plug the electrical connectors back in for both fans. It's very important. Don't forget to do that or else the fans won't work. They'll click when they're locked into place. And reinstall the upper radiator hose. Squeeze the clamp together, I'll put it back into place. The clamp locks in, if you actually manage to get the clamp to lock, we'll just kind of line it up where it used, where it was originally. And then I'm gonna use a flat bladed screwdriver to just unlock it. It'll snap into place. There it is. Put this back on, slides right over it. Lower radiator hose back on. Watch out for dripping coolant. Put the hose clamp back down where it belongs. And there are the side cutters. 
cut off the cable tie. Careful, it's gonna drip. The same for this one. Also will probably drip. Of course, afterwards, top off the transmission fluid. Put the hose back on. Wipe up any excess. Put the hose clamp back in place. Do the same for the other side. We're gonna fill and bleed the cooling system. We're using a coolant funnel. For the appropriate 50-50 mixture of water and coolant the vehicle calls for. You don't need a funnel like this. Uh, it does make it easier. It certainly makes it easier for us to show you what's happening, but we're gonna run the car with it filled with coolant the cap, of course, is not on here. This allows the car, when it warms up, the thermostat opens for any air bubbles that are trapped inside there to come out through this funnel and then be replaced by this extra coolant. You can simply do that by just running, filling the radiator up to the top and then running the car with the cap off. It might get a little messy, but it will work in your driveway. At the same time, I'm also gonna turn on the, I'll turn the heat to hot. I won't turn the fan motor on because I want the car to get warm enough and have the thermostat open up, but I do want coolant circulating through the heater core so that we eliminate any bubbles that may be in there. I'm gonna remove our funnel. This coolant is hot, so I'm gonna be careful. If you need to, you can use this to top off your overflow reservoir. If not, I'll put it back in the bottle and reuse it. Remove our funnel piece here, a little adapter. Radiator's filled up right to the top. And I'll reinstall the radiator cap. Put the shield back in place underneath the bumper. Some of these clips are broken. This does line up over here. The push clip that's not broken, I'll put it in. This would be the same for the other side, except ours is broken and missing, but this will go underneath. millimeter bolt back up in place, capturing these two shields. If ours wasn't broken, this bolt would go through and up and into it. There's one more here, but ours broke. It's rusty. It's not a big deal. It's held in enough uh, clips and bolts. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.